Hey, it's Sean with Sean's DIY and Reviews, and today I have another video on my Honda Pilot. And so, essentially, what I'm going to do is put on a what's known as SVCM VCM muzzler. Uh, what these things do is they prevent the cylinders from deactivating. So the VCM actually is the system that's built into the computer that tells the computer when you're at operating speed or whatever to put the vehicle into eco mode, which shuts down several of the cylinders. Now, the idea was that it was going to get you a lot better gas mileage, but from what I understand, it doesn't really do that, or it gives you the most negligible amount you won't even notice, and it causes all kinds of problems, or many people say it causes problems with the engines. I bought this Honda Pilot with about 145,000 miles on it. I don't. I get some judder here and there with the transmission, so I'm going to see if that helps. Also, uh, oil burning is what's known to happen, and so this product, putting it on, which is really simple to do, is said to avoid that. So we're going to show you what the product is, tell you about some of the competitive products that are out there for this, that are cheaper and so on, why you might want to pay the extra, and then um, you know install it into the vehicle. And so. One thing to keep in mind is this is not sponsored in any way. I bought this with my own money. Uh, I picked the one, the one, this one, because of the fact that uh, it was in stock. The other more expensive one wasn't. The cheaper ones you might not want to buy simply because you have to replace resistors, which is a lot of work, and you don't have somebody who has an engineering experience basically doing uh, what they do. So let me tell you what this thing does. It actually tells the computer that it's not that the vehicle is not up to operating temperature yet because the VCM only activates when the vehicle is at full operating temperature so it tells it it's one or two degrees below operating temperature and so the cheaper ones you might have to cha change the uh, the resistor when it's colder or hotter out so that it still does that the more expensive ones will do that for you automatically without any further ado let's open this up show you what's in the box, show you how easy it is to install in your vehicle. But essentially what you do is you, first you probably want to take off this little air intake, air snorkel. So when you're taking these out, just pop the middle part out first, right, from the outside part, and then it should pop out much easier. If you just try to go underneath it, uh, this thing is still locked in place. So we'll do that. Put them in the front here, just because it's nice little easy space here and then I can just pull this air box thing out so that's just simply put a screwdriver into each of these guys here to make sure it's in the right place and just pop it right off okay throw that to the side also and those are the first step is to connect disconnect the harness from the sensor it's hard to see down there so what I'm going to do is just show you on this particular sensor so basically at the top you push this and then you just pull the thing off. This is not the right sensor on top of the air intake, but just to show you what you're doing here, that's what you're doing. I didn't need to hear it do that, but you can hear that click. So down here on this sensor, right here, here's the bat battery right here, right over here, just under the engine. If you follow this front piece right here, follow this wire right here, over there, touch the bottom part, pull that in, it disconnects, okay? Just like this one did, don't touch that one. I just showed you so you can actually see one. Otherwise here I'm doing it blindly. I just kind of push on this clip on the top, pull it off. It comes off pretty easily. Next. The next step is it says it takes the, says take the Mel connector of this harness, the SVCM, and then connect it to this, okay? So um, that's gonna be this part right here. Easy to figure out because of this and essentially you're gonna connect these two pieces. So basically it's taking this sensor, plug it into here, and this is where all the magic happens in here. So I'll simply plug this guy in uh, the right way. And it's gonna be this way. Click it in place, I heard a click. So now I have that in place, I know that part is good, all right? Next thing I need to do now is take all three of these wires, as they said, and just zip tie all of these together. And then that's where that's gonna go, then down here. So zip tie all these three together. I'll take a provided zip tie here. And I can't do this with, hold the camera and do this with one hand, but basically put them right about there and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as that's done. 
All right, so now it's saying take this other part and put that back down on your sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now down in here. Make sure you hear the click. I heard the click. Okay, now the only wire left is this battery wire right here. And so I'm gonna run that behind these battery terminals just so that they're clean and out of the way and put that back here and up through here. And you can see that right there that I pulled that battery wire through there. Now it was saying do not disconnect the battery when you put uh, this part here. Some of the other ones that I saw actually gave you a, a nut that you can put this positive terminal on the battery and essentially tie that down. But here we just have to connect this and you just don't wanna just put it on there. You wanna make sure this is secure onto your battery terminal. So what I'll probably do is put this on here underneath this bolt. Okay, because it said do not disconnect the battery, I realized that this side bolt right here, just like if you look on the neutral or the, the ground, the ground only has one bolt. This one has two. So there's the one on the side that straps around the post and that's what holds this onto the positive. So I'm keeping that one nice and tight, not messing with that. So I took off this bolt, put my lead wire on here, and then I'm gonna tighten down this bolt here clockwise so that this bolt here is holding down my SVCM power. Um, and then I'm gonna make sure that's nice and tight. Also, if I'm ever gonna change my battery, I'm gonna take this guy off first before doing that so that there's no issue with power or a short or anything like that. You wanna make sure you're grounded and make sure you're only doing this. You definitely don't wanna take this off and put this back on and get a spark because a spark may go through here and just totally burn that out. So that's the reason why it's saying don't take that off because if you take that off, put it back on, that's where you get a spark. So this other wire is where I put it underneath and just tighten that down. And essentially, I'm gonna run this cable underneath, uh, go around here, and I'm gonna run it underneath this little spot because there's an opening there, and then this way I can close that down. Now here too, it said you don't want this to touch any part of the engine because it's gonna be hot. So I'm gonna zip tie this also around this other wiring harness that I have here so that that's out of the way and then that should do what I need it to do. One of the other things that it says, and another reason why I'd pay the more expensive one, is that it mentions that if the engine does overheat, because this is telling this is telling the engine, hey, listen, you're not up to operating temperature, so do not yet engage the uh, eco mode or you know the shutting down the cylinders. But it also has a bypass that if the engine is about to overheat, it's gonna send the real information to your dash so you know, uh-oh, I got a problem here. I need to handle this problem. So hopefully this was helpful. Give a thumbs up, ask any questions, share, comment, love uh, answering the community. So by all means, I will answer if you have any questions and I'll do a follow-up video letting you know how all this turned out. But really simple here. It's unplugging one connector plugging the new connector into your wire harness, plugging it then into the port where you took it out, and then simply running a power, positive power to the battery. That's it, and you're done.